We all have dates. No, I'm not talking about the dates where we go out for dinner and a movie. I'm talking about the dates in our lives that no matter how many years pass, it's a date that you will never forget. The dates that hit and all the memories and symbolism come flooding back as if it were yesterday. My date is May 29th, 2009. On that day, art no longer was just a hobby, but a way of coping and escaping the world around me for just a brief moment. Many people think of art as a hobby or a class you take or something that an artist does for fun. And quite frankly, I used to think the same thing. Although I had a love for art and it seemed to be something at which I was good, I never saw any deeper meaning than just making pretty things. However, my viewpoint changed when I faced a trial in my life that made me begin relying on art in a different way. Art has the power to heal, evoke a feeling or emotion, teach history and social norms, and many more things, yet it is still being pushed out of our educational systems because of the lack of knowledge of what it can do for our lives and our children's lives. My sister Chelsea and I grew up with two close cousins, Savannah and Sierra. Like Savannah and Chelsea, Sierra and I were the same age and we were inseparable. In the spring of 2007, Sierra and I were on the same middle school cheer squad and basketball team. I was with Sierra at a birthday party when she fell and broke her knee. At the hospital, the doctor said it shouldn't have broken that easily. Then they noticed something didn't look right on the x-ray, so they sent her away for more scans and testing, and our family anxiously waited for the results. We received the terrible news Sierra was diagnosed with osteosarcoma cancer. Immediately, Sierra started chemotherapy and radiation treatments and started to lose her beautiful red hair. The next couple of months were a constant trial, watching her be sick during and after chemotherapy treatments, all while maintaining her studies in school. Sierra had a first surgery on her knee, but unfortunately the cancer continued to spread, and the only solution was to have her leg amputated. The doctors performed an experimental open wound technique so she would have bi-weekly cleaning treatments. These cleanings were extremely painful, so I would lay in bed with her and together we would paint just to take her mind off of the pain. This was the first time I saw art in a different light than I had before, an escape and a distraction from the world. A little over a year after her diagnosis, she was flown to Houston for a checkup where we got the news that the cancer had spread to her lungs and there was no way to stop it. Our family drove to Houston and stayed near the hospital for two weeks. While we were there, my father and I would view the art hung on the hospital walls, which had been created by the patients and other artists to bring life and joy to the hospital. When she was then moved to hospice, we sat at her bedside until Sierra passed away on May 29th, 2009. From that point on, our family all found ways to cope with the grief and move forward. For me, it was through art. Art became more than just a hobby. It became a form of expression and almost a form of desperation to show how I was feeling when words weren't enough. In fact, the painting I am making today is derived from a drawing that I quickly sketched on a scrap piece of paper during Sierra's battle with cancer. After drawing it, I shoved it in my sketchbook and forgot about it. My mother and sister found it in my room about a year ago. I had all of these thoughts and feelings about my life, but I couldn't express them in any other way than through my art. It was my crutch and my stronghold. It was always there unfailingly whenever I needed it. Art can be an expression of happiness, trial, life, death, and is something you can get lost in and be still in. Be still. Being still is more difficult than it sounds. 
for not being still is one of our society's biggest problems. With all of the technology and entertainment available to us, we move faster than life without a moment to sit in silence with no distractions. We either feel guilty that we are not being productive or it is too silent and still that our mind does not know how to handle it. That's the beauty of painting and producing art. It forces you to be still. No distractions, no technology, just you, your brush, and your canvas. In this flow state, your mind begins to focus solely on the brush strokes and subconsciously process life. Art has a beautiful way of sneaking into your mind and asking you the right questions and processing the answers. Art has shaped our society and history in so many ways. We admire artists who spent hours upon hours on paintings that are hung on the most prestigious gallery walls in the world. I have been privileged to stare at the beauty of some of the world's most famous original pieces of art, including the Mona Lisa. As I stood there, all I wanted to know were the stories and the emotions that were processed within the brushstrokes of the artist. Sometimes the best art is produced under the worst and most unfortunate circumstances. Some recognizable artists, including Caravaggio, Munch, Rembrandt, and Picasso, experienced tragedy during their lives and used art as a form of expression and reflection from those hard times. Their art tells a story. Sometimes we find it difficult to interpret their story, but we know it's there. Had their works not been produced or preserved, generations would have lost the benefit of their stories. Many of you have been through some form of tragedy and hardship. Hard times are going to come, but it is up to us to deal with those hard times in ways that will be beneficial to us and our perspective on life. You may be thinking, I'm not an artist. I could never paint or produce artwork. You don't have to be an artist to make art. In a sense, we have all been artists our whole lives. Our lives are made up of many brushstrokes that form who we are. And at the end of it all, I hope that we have a finished painting that shows how we persevered through the hard times. Slow down, concentrate on the brushstrokes, and be the artist of your own life. For our well-being as a society, we must continue to invest in education and support artists. If we continue to view art education as just a hobby and miss the deeper value to the individual artist, we risk conceding to the fast pace and losing generations of stories told from the emotional perspective of the artist. Art gives you a different point of view on something that you have been looking at for so long. And if you give it a chance, it just might help you cope as well. My story today is about Sierra Elizabeth Brand. She was so beautiful. She died from osteosarcoma at the age of 15. She was my cousin and my best friend. I hope my story today inspires you to cope with your own tragedy or to support artists and art education, or to find a cure for this terrible disease. Thank you.